it's about 445 on Monday, April the 27th. And the second round of the payroll protection plan is already out of money or it's so far into the future that the people that it was really intended for, the small business people, won't get to see it. I was talking to a bank earlier today, texting with a banker, I should say, earlier today, a small bank, exactly the people that were, the goal was to get the money to. Now this bank had already participated, but it is a small bank. They had 1,100 applications by 10 o'clock this morning. They can only process 10 a day. They only have people in manpower to process 10 loans a day, had 1,100 at 10 o'clock. So at the very best, they're two weeks out before they'll even be able to determine whether the people who've submitted the applications can qualify. It's not their fault. I mean, they were fully staffed prior to COVID. They had no idea they were gonna have this kind of loan volume coming in. Another small bank, but a much larger small bank involved in three states, it's got lending officers, it's been making loans. It's got lending officers who are working 10, 12 hours a day 14 hours a day trying to process the applications and they're thousands of loans behind. I was told one of the super regional banks has 35,000 applications ahead of somebody who's been, whose application was accepted on the 14th, but they're 35,000 ahead of them. And theirs was ready April the 14th. The Easy math is that the federal government, the United States, not the federal government, but the country, the gross domestic product, is sh being short about $200 billion per week. Of that, it's easy math to come up with about $140 billion per week. That is small business money. Now, what's really amazing to me is that nobody seems to want to do the very simple math. And if this program started out, I've got video back in March where I'm saying these numbers and that the amount of money that they're talking about getting to the small business people, the amount of money that the government is talking about getting into circulation is just a drop. It's like sand on a beach. It really is not going to be much help because you can't get it out fast enough with the regulations that are in place. Now, if you, if you aren't subscribed, there's a really funny guy on YouTube. His, uh, his ticked off Vic. First off, I like his name, but he sometimes is ticked off at the wrong people. He did a video over the weekend about this very program, the payroll protection plan, and how it's PPP and how the government's always peeing on pe uh, the people that are pay working hard to pay their taxes. And I really think he and I agree on a lot of things a lot of times. He's really funny. But this time he's ticked off at the wrong people. Because the problem is not the Ruth Chris's of the world, uh, the, the companies that got the money because they were big corporations. Because when they got the money, when the loans were originally done, they qualified. They already had strong banking relationships and financials that were current, accurate, and available. And their bankers told them that it was on a first come, first serve basis and they needed to get their application in. And they qualified under the way the government had written the rules. There was nothing in the original rules that said, if you're a big corporation, you don't get to apply. It said if you have under 500 employees tied to a specific employee identification number, you could apply. And if you met these criteria, you're going to lose business or you had lost business because of COVID, you could qualify up to so many millions of dollars. So what happened was these corporations were ready. The law, as it was written, made it possible for them to do exactly what they did, and it would be abhorrent if they didn't do it. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm in defense of somebody who did something wrong. Ruth Chris and every of the other large corporations that got the money got the money because first off, it's going to be free if they use it for their employees. They don't have to repay it. And second, if they didn't get the money, it would actually be malfeasance on their part because they qualified to get the money. It wasn't their fault that the idiots who wrote the legislation didn't know what they were writing. Now, 
Vic DiBetito, he wants to take aim at the um, CEO of Ruth Chris because the guy makes $6 million. Well, the reason he makes $6 million is because he had his company ready to take advantage of failed government policies. It's not our fault. It's not the people who go to work every day that the people who write the law don't understand what they're writing and the implications it's going to have. Now, the other side of it is uh, they were, the big companies were shamed into giving the money back. That's the easy way of saying it. But the other way of looking at it is because it is the government, they get to change the rules. And they changed the rules and they said, well, we made a mistake. We didn't mean for these big corporations to get the money. And we're going to require that if you, ha you can, we're, we're not going to change the 500 and the EIN number. We're just going to simply say 500 employees and your employee identification number. We're just going to simply say that if you have other ways of getting the money, you don't get to come to us for it. So if you're a public company, you don't get to come. If you're a hedge fund, yeah, and all these other ways of businesses that they're eliminating. And then... After all of that, they've now come back last Friday in changing the rules again into what is now referred to as the interim final rule, because it won't be the final rule, where they're adding more qualifications in to begin to eliminate more other of these other people. But the problem is that they have no way to get the money to the small business person, because in general, the, in general, the small business person does not have, on a regular basis, exactly what the large corporations that got the money do have. They don't have current, accurate, and available financial statements. They don't have strong banking relationships with bankers who can say to them a week in advance, this is a first come, first serve basis, get your application in now. And so, if you want to be ticked off at somebody, be ticked off at the idiots that write these regulations and then want to go back and change the regulations once they realize they've made a mistake. And then when they say they're going to get the money out to the people who really need to have the money, they have no way to get it out because the people that they're wanting to distribute the money, the small banks, don't physically have the people to get it done. Now, if you want to talk about the definition of insanity, that's the definition of insanity. They want to be able to write rules that they can change in the future because they publicly screwed up. And when they go to fix the rules, they don't know how to go about fixing the rules. And every time they go about fixing the rules, they just create more problems in getting the money out, creating false hopes, false dreams, and false really, really, really failures by people who are hanging on, waiting for this money to get to them. So if you, if you want to be ticked off about something, be ticked off for the right people. It's not Ruth Chris and all the big corporations that got the money. It's the idiots that wrote the legislation. I'm Victor Jernigan. I want to focus on real estate and real estate topics. I just got a little sidetracked on this one today because I know people who are in line to get the money and I know there's no chance. It's not going to happen. So we're going to begin to talk about more winners and losers in real estate and real estate investing in my other videos. But for day, today, I, if you like the videos, if you like the information, I do ask you to, to press the like button, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about me. And if you're not already following uh, Ticked Off Vic and his videos, you should definitely do it. That guy's funny. Thank you very much.